Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel Mathematics Learning with Dr. Anirudh Palit. In the last lecture, we discussed about the Bolzano theorem of continuous function, intermediate value theorem and fixed point theorem. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the boundedness property of continuous functions and some related relevant theorems. So, I uh, request that this video is because if you have a particular property, you will discuss it. You will be helpful to you. You will be able to study this theorem. You will be able to refer to it. So, you will be able to request this video. You will be able to এখানে এই ভিডিওটা যদি তোমাদের পছন্দ হয় তাহলে প্লিজ ভিডিওটা লাইক করো এবং বন্ধুদের সাথে ভিডিওটাকে শেয়ার করো এবং আমার চ্যানেলটাকে অবশ্যই সাবস্ক্রাইব করো এবং কোন রকম যদি কোনো সমস্যা থাকে কোনো क्वेश्चन যদি থাকে তাহলে প্লিজ কমেন্ট বক্সে লিখে জানাও তাহলে সময় নষ্ট না করে আমি ডক্টর অনিরুদ্ধ পালিত শুরু করছি রিয়েল অ্যানালাইসিস থেকে লিমিট এন্ড কন্টিনিউটি रिलेटेड লেকচার নাম্বার 14 আজকে সবার আগে যে থিওরেমটা আমরা প্রুফ করতে যাচ্ছি সেটাকে আমরা বলে থাকি बाउंडेडনেস প্রপার্টি অফ কন্টিনিউয়াস ফাংশন হোয়াট ইজ দা থিওরেম দা থিওরেম সেজ দ্যাট ইফ এফ ইজ আ ফাংশন ডিফাইনড ফ্রম আই টু দা সেট অফ রিয়েল নাম্বারস আর হোয়াট ইজ আই আই ইজ এন ইজ আ बाउंडेड এন্ড ক্লোজড ইন্টারভাল ইফ এফ ইজ আ ফাংশন ফ্রম আই টু আর uh, on the bounded and uh, it's a continuous function on the bounded and closed interval i uh, then uh, it is uh, the, then uh, it is it means and then f is bounded then um, we can say f is bounded there that means f is a bounded function so আমাদের দেখাতে হবে that if একটা bounded function এখানে একটা জিনিস মাথায় মাথায় রাখতে হবে that the interval i should be a bounded and Closed interval, bounded and closed interval ना होले, आमादे ए result आ होल्ड करे ना, एम उन एक्जाम्पल देखानो जाए, so आमड़ा एखाने proof कर बाच इस्टा कर छी, that f is a bounded function, if possible, we suppose that the function f is unbounded एवो, जो दी possible होए, आमड़ा धोर निलम, that f function टा upper side थेके bounded ना, ता होले आमड़ा finally एक्टा contradictory result एश Anyway, so if we suppose that uh, the function f is uh, unbounded above, then we can say that this range set, range set is defined in this way, f of x such that x belongs to the interval i. We denote this range set by f of i. So this set f of x such that x belongs to i, this range set should be an unbounded set and it should be unbounded above. Hmm as because we assume that f is a bounded uh, unbounded above function therefore this range set is an unbounded above uh, set therefore we can say that for each epsilon uh, for each positive integer n there exists an element uh, from uh, x n belonging to i x n belonging to i such that this x f of x n is greater than n so f of xn should be larger than any large number. Any such large number means whatever uh, whatever integer you consider, f of xn would ultimately some element xn must be there so that f of xn uh, is ultimately greater than um, that particular n. In, in, uh, so we can say that f of xn is greater than n. Otherwise, uh, otherwise this uh, set would be a bounded set. We assume that uh, this is an unbounded set. Therefore, for each natural number n, uh, we can say that there exists uh, uh, an element xn in the set capital I such that f of xn is greater than n. Okay. Now, uh, we uh, observe that um, for each n, we get this kind of xn. That means for n is equal to 1, we get the element x1. For n is equal to 2, we get 
the element x2 and so on so we ultimately get a sequence x1 x2 x3 etc sequence of elements uh, from this interval i so we ultimately get a sequence of elements in the interval i and what is this interval this is a bounded and closed interval hmm. so as because the um, set i is a bounded interval and these elements xn uh, are chosen from um, this from this interval i therefore uh, we can say that uh, this um, sequence is a bounded sequence in the uh, interval i and so by bolzano westerst theorem for sequences we can say that there exist at least uh, one cluster point j um, of the sequence xn so what is j j is a cluster point cluster point means and that uh, there is a convergent subsequence uh, there is a convergent subsequence let us denote it by xnk converging to j as k tends to infinity so this is the um, meaning of cluster point cluster point means and that is actually a subsequential limit of the sequence original sequence uh, may be convergent may not be convergent but if the sequence is a, if the original sequence is a bounded sequence then bolzano westerst theorem for sequences Uh, says that th there exist a cluster point of the sequence that means there exist a convergent subsequence converging to j as k tends to infinity so we get at least one convergent subsequence x n k converging to j and each and every subsequences are actually the member of this uh, sequence and therefore they must satisfy the definition of that uh, property satisfied by each member what is the property property is this uh, property number 1 if of xn is greater than n so if we put xn is equal to xnk therefore from 1 we get f of xnk is greater than nk for all value of k okay so we can say that this result is true for all value of k okay now uh, since uh, this uh, this is a subsequence and in a subsequence we know that nk converges to infinity as k tends to infinity therefore from equation number 2 and 3 from equation number 2 we get x uh, nk converges to j and uh, we get that this nk ultimately converges to diverges to infinity not converges it diverges to infinity so we can say that f of xn should also uh, diverge to infinity as k tends to infinity therefore we combine equation number 2 and equation number 3 and we finally get uh, that x nk converges to j and f of x n k diverges to infinity as k tends to infinity okay so we get this result let us denote it by equation number 4 now as because uh, the function f is continuous hmm, and j belongs to the um, interval i why j belongs to the interval i because uh, this uh, element j we can prove that a cluster point is always a limit point of this set okay and as because uh, this is uh, this uh, f of xn um, over here uh, cluster sorry uh, i mean to say that um, this uh, cluster point j is a limit point of um, this sequence and as we call this sequence uh, all the elements of that sequence belongs to a uh, uh, subset which is a closed set therefore that limit point must belong to the uh, element um, the um, interval i anyway over here as we call uh, if is continuous and j belongs to i so from the definition of continuity we can say that uh, from the definition of continuity in terms of sequence we can say that 
x n k converges to j and therefore the corresponding functional values f of x n k must converge to f of j f of j means uh, it's a finite real number okay as k tends to infinity of course hmm? as k tends to infinity so uh, we uh, obtain that f of x n k uh, as x, f of x n k converges to j uh, as x n k converges to j this functional values f of x n k converges to f of j as k tends to infinity but we uh, observe over here that f of x n k diverges to infinity this is one result and in the second we get f of x n k converges to a finite number so result number 4 and result number 5 equation number 4 and 5 these are contradictory to each other and this contradiction uh, says that uh, our assumption was wrong what was our assumption our assumption was that the function f is unbounded above hmm. therefore we can say that the function uh, f must be bounded above and similarly we can uh, we can say that the function f is bounded above okay bounded above on i similarly we can say that um, applying the same result to the uh, function minus a we can say that the, if we assume that the function uh, is um, bounded below um, unbounded below then we will get again uh, one more contradiction so applying the result to the function minus a we can say that the function a is bounded below on I, on the interval i of course on the interval i so uh, the function f is bounded above and below both that means the function f is a bounded function thus we prove that uh, whatever be the uh, continuous function if it is defined on the bounded closed bounded and closed set then the corresponding function f must be a continuous function so this is called the uh, boundedness property of continuous function now uh, we got the, we, get, we got the result that f should be a bounded function fine if it is a bounded function then its supremum and infimum must exist now, now we are going to prove one more result related to this supremum and infimum we involve uh, the supremum and infimum in this proof what does it say it says that if a function f is continuous uh, in the closed interval i closed and bounded interval i closed and bounded and bounded interval i then there exist at least two numbers alpha and beta one uh, is alpha another is beta in the interval i such that f of alpha is equal to supremum of the function fx over the interval i hmm? and f of beta is equal to infimum of the function fx over the interval i so this is the second result that we are going to prove that means there exists at least one element alpha at which the value of the function equals becomes equal to the supremum of the function fx and there exists at least one element beta such that the value of the function at that point beta becomes equal to the infimum value of the function so we have to prove this result now for um, simplicity we assume that capital m is equal to supremum of the function f and small m is equal to infimum of the function f hmm? then we can say that small m less than is equal to fx and less than is equal to capital m for all value of x belonging to the interval i as because capital M is the supremum and small m is the infimum therefore fx the value of fx must lie in between the and their upper and least upper bound and the greatest lower bound for all x belonging to the interval uh, in interval i hmm. we know suppose if possible that uh, there is no element alpha belonging to the interval i such that f of alpha becomes is equal to the supremum value capital M hmm. I assume that capital I assume that i interval in the uh, element such that f of alpha becomes is equal to the 
supremum value capital M. It am not formula. In that case, we can say that uh, over here this equality should not hold. If any equality to hold for a bit now. So if this equality does not hold, then strict inequality must hold. So we can say that f of x is always less than m for all x belonging to the interval i. Okay. So I'm da ekhane bolte parbo that m minus f of x is strictly greater than zero. Hmm. As because it is strictly greater than zero, therefore we can say that one by m minus f x. Let us denote it by phi x. 1 by a minus f x that should also be strictly greater than 0 for all x belonging to the interval i. Hmm? Uh, and uh, along with that, that as because a f is a continuous function, therefore we can say that this uh, function phi should also be a continuous function over here. You see, a uh, is not equal to f x. A is strictly greater than f x. Therefore, this is never equal to 0. And so we can say that this function. Uh, phi of x, um, it is a, a continuous function on the interval a b. What is a b? a b is actually in uh, this interval i. Hmm? i is equal to the interval a, b, a and b. Now, <coughs> over here, the function uh, uh, phi, it is a continuous function defined on the closed interval a b. Uh, or the interval i. Therefore, um, by the previous theorem, we can say that phi is a bounded function and uh, as because it is bounded, there must exist some upper bound b, let us call it b, hmm? such that phi of x is less than b for all x belonging to the interval i. Okay. Now, what does it mean? It means that uh, phi, phi means uh, as because phi is greater than 0, so we can say that 0 less than this phi x, this is the expression of phi x, and that is less than b for all x belonging to the interval i. Okay, now we make some manipulations, we just uh, invert this inequality and we ultimately get that 1 by b is less than m minus fx. 1 by b is less than m minus fx for all x belonging to the interval i and this means that fx is less than m minus 1 by b and m minus 1 by b what is mean what is this m minus 1 by b is always less than m for all x belonging to i. So what we obtain, we obtain that m minus 1 by b is an upper bound of the function fx. But uh, m minus 1 by b is an upper bound which is smaller than the least upper bound. By the definition of least upper bound, by the definition of least upper bound, there should not exist any smaller upper bound. So this result violates the fact that m, this m, this m is the supremum that means the least of all the upper bounds least upper bound therefore we cannot obtain this kind of result it say it means that uh, we ultimately obtain a contradiction uh, why and what for did we obtain this kind of contradiction can we contradiction to pay them because of our wrong assumption hmm. what was our assumption our assumption was that there is no alpha such that f of alpha is equal to m so we can say that there exists at least one element, at least one. Hmm. There exists at least one element alpha belonging to the interval i such that f of alpha is equal to m. So first part is complete that we obtain minimum one alpha in the interval i, we get minimum one alpha in the interval i such that f of alpha is equal to m. Next, um, we are trying to prove that there exists one more beta, one another inter, uh, element beta in the interval i such that f of beta is equal to m. We again suppose that if possible, there uh, we suppose that there is no element beta in the interval i such that f of beta is equal to m hmm? as because f of uh, x uh, there is f of x is always greater than um, or equal to m and as per 
as per our assumption there is no element in the set such that the equality holds therefore we can say that fx this fx should be strictly greater than this value m for all x in the interval i okay so we obtain this conclusion that fx is strictly greater than m for all x belonging to the interval i what does it mean it means that fx minus m is greater than 0 for all x belonging to i and so we can say that 1 by fx minus m that is greater than 0 for all x belonging to i and we denote this expression 1 by fx minus m as the function psi x okay as because the function a is continuous uh, so we can say that the function psi is also continuous in the closed interval a b and therefore the function psi should be a bounded function and let us uh, denote this uh, bound by capital a the upper bound so we can say that psi of x is always less than a for all x belonging to the interval i and uh, as because psi of x is positive so we can say that 0 less than psi x this is the expression of psi x hmm. and that is less than a for all x belonging to the interval i now after manipulation from this inequality after inversion we can say that 1 by a is less than fx minus m for all x belonging to the uh, interval i and so we can say that fx is greater than m plus 1 by a and this expression m plus 1 by a is greater than m m plus 1 by a is greater than m for all x belonging to i so what we obtain we obtain that m plus 1 by a is a lower bound of the function f but as per our assumption that m is the infimum or the greatest lower bound that m is the infimum or greatest lower bound and the greatest lower bound as because it is the greatest lower bound there is no lower bound larger than m m is the lower bound but what we obtain we get, uh, uh, we get a lower bound m plus 1 by a of the function f which is larger than m this is a contradiction a contradiction is because of our wrong assumption our uh, assumption is that there is no element beta in the interval i such that if a beta is equal to small m hmm, ताहोले आम्रा बोलते पारी conclusion की ड्रा कुपते पारी that there exist at least at least one element beta belonging to i such that if of beta is equal to m ताहोले ए जगा थेके आम्रा conclusion ड्रा कुपते पारलाम that um, there exist at least one element alpha belonging to i such that f of alpha is equal to the supremum value and there exist at least one element beta in the interval i such that f of beta is equal to the infimum value so this way we have proved our theorem to prove our theorem last lecture last result we have to prove an interesting result that the result we have to see that if a function a is a a real valid continuous function defined on the closed interval i in that case this image set is an interval or a singleton set result amader best kichu exam e select kora hoye thake to ekhane amra ki dekhate jacchi amra dekhte jacchi if jodi continuous function hoye thake defined on the bounded and closed interval i তাহলে আমরা দেখাতে যাচ্ছি that এই যে ইমেজ সেটটা পাওয়া যাবে সেই ইমেজ সেটটা এটাও একটা ইমেজ সেটটা একটা ইন্টারভাল হবে অথবা এটা একটা সিঙ্গলটন সেট হবে তাহলে কি কি দেখাতে যাচ্ছি আমরা দেখাতে যাচ্ছি that এই যে ইমেজ সেট we are going to show that this image set f of i is an interval or a singleton set so uh, at first amra uh, jodi dhore ni that uh, this uh, is a singleton set f of alpha is a singleton set tahole the proof ta complete so amra ekhane uh, we uh, amra assume kore nichhi that um, the this set f of alpha is not a singleton set hmm. 
এটা যদি সিঙ্গেল টন সেট मींस এর মধ্যে একটা মাত্র ইফ অফ আলফা এর মধ্যে এই সেটের মধ্যে একটা মাত্র এলিমেন্ট আছে ইন দ্যাট কেস এর রেজাল্টটা প্রুফ ট্রু হয়ে যাচ্ছে সো আমরা এখানে এসে আরেকটা কেস কনসিডার করছি যেখানে ইফ অফ আলফা ইজ নট আ সিঙ্গেল টন সেট তাহলে এটা যদি সিঙ্গেল টন সেট না হয় থাকে তাহলে আমরা কি বলতে পারবো আমরা বলতে পারি দ্যাট এস বিকজ এফ ইজ কন্টিনিউয়াস হুম uh and so by this previous result previous theorem we can say that there exist at least uh, two points alpha and beta belonging to that interval such that f of alpha is equal to the supremum value of the function f and f of beta is equal to the infimum value of the function f then small m less than is equal to f x less than is equal to capital m for all x belonging to the interval i hmm? now jodi um, possible hoy if possible we uh, suppose that the image set f of i is not an interval image set this image set f of i is not an interval tahole amra ei je small m theke capital m ei je ei je zone ta amra pacchi ei window ta amra pacchi small m theke capital m within this window we can say that this is not an interval small m to capital m is not an interval hmm. if it is not an interval then there is a gap in between small m and capital m and from that gap we choose a number mu hmm. then from that gap uh, we choose a number mu a gap in the number amra choose korchi and we can say that f of x is not equal to mu hmm. Uh, that means mu er kono pre image thakbe na that means uh, mu is not a member of f of i amra eta assume korechi that f of i is not an interval hmm eta jodi ekta interval na hoye thake tahole small m ar capital m er majhe ekta na ekta point amra mu pabo hmm sei point ta ke amra mu naam dicchi uh, such that uh, this point does not have any pre image of the function fx Hmm. and so we can say that f of x is not equal to mu for all x belonging to the interval i tahole amra ki bolte pari amra ekhane ei jinish ta ke ei bhabe bhabte pari that eta ke erokom bhabe ami to dekhanor chesta korchi that ekta line amra ekhane draw korte pari line ta ki rokom line ta ke amra ei bhabe draw korte pari say this is uh, this is this is the number small m and this is the number capital m hmm. so ekhane jodi function ta jodi totally eta jodi ekta interval na hoye thake if this is not an interval tahole amra etake ki bhabe bolte pari tahole amra bolte parbo that ekhane ekta gap thakbe ei je e type er ekta gap toiri hoye jabe within this gap there exist a number mu ekhane amra ekta number ultimately pabo ei number ta ke amra mu bole denote korte pari so within this mu uh, this mu is not a member of this um, of this set of this set f of i hmm? and so we can say that f of x is not equal to mu for all x belonging to i now if f of x is not equal to mu in that case i'm write a function as in put if i x is equal to f x minus mu uh, clearly as because the function f is continuous so this function phi is also a continuous function and uh, what is phi a phi a is equal to f of a minus mu hmm. now uh, what is uh, f of a minus mu f of a minus mu what is what we get we obtain you see over here amra jehetu ekhane ekhane x is equal to a put kori tahole amra bolte parbo that ekhane ki paoa jacche amra ekhane pacchi f of a minus mu amra f of a kibhabe consider korchi ekhane amra rather ei bhabe bolte pari ekhane amra rather ei bhabe consider korchi f of a na likhe etake f of alpha likhle aro poriskar hobe বোঝানো যাবে f of alpha আর এটাকে লিখতে পারি f of beta ওকে না এখানে আমরা কি অ্যাজুম করে নিয়েছি दट এখানে আমরা দেখতে পাচ্ছি दट m 
m what is m m is actually our this a for beta this a for beta is equal to our small m and what is capital m capital m is equal to f of alpha so amra ei je ekhane je result amra pacchi phi of alpha is equal to amra likhte pari f of alpha minus mu and uh, in that case uh, this uh, f of alpha this minus mu this difference uh, this difference eta ki hoye jabe f of alpha minus mu ekhane amra amra ekhane likhte parbo that this is greater than 0 and this is less than 0 f of beta minus mu ei je mu er value ta f of beta er che larger therefore f of beta minus mu it is less than 0 so what we obtain that phi is a continuous function so that phi of alpha positive and phi of beta is negative so by bolzano theorem we can say that um, uh, that there exists at least one element c in between ebhabe likhle aikto bhalo hoy in between alpha and beta and this alpha beta is actually a subset of the interval i such that f of c is equal to 0 and this implies that f of c is equal to mu and therefore f of c over here then we obtain that f of c is equal to mu kintu amra ki assume kore niyechhilam amra assume kore niyechhilam that there exist no element amra assume kore niyechhilam that there exist no element x in the set i such that f of x is equal to mu তাহলে আমরা কি পাচ্ছি আমরা একটা কন্ট্রাডিক্টরি রেজাল্ট পাচ্ছি আমরা একবার এখানে দেখছি f of c is equal to mu হচ্ছে আবার আমরা অ্যাজুম করে নিয়েছিলাম दट ফর অল x বিলংিং টু i f of x ক্যান নেভার বি ইকুয়াল টু mu সো উই অবটেইন আ কন্ট্রাডিকশন কন্ট্রাডিকশনটা কেন আমরা পেয়েছিলাম বিকজ আমরা অ্যাজুম করে নিয়েছিলাম दट f of i ইজ নট অ্যান ইন্টারভাল সো আমরা বলতে পারবো दट এই আমাদের কন্ট্রাডিকশনটা ভুল এবং f of i is an interval and what is the interval interval should be small m comma capital m small m হচ্ছে ইনফিনিটাম the smallest value of f and capital m is the supremum তাহলে f of i এটাও একটা ইন্টারভাল হবে দেয়ারফর আমরা এরকম ভাবে যদি গ্রাফিক্যালি জিনিসটাকে ভাবি আমরা এটাকে এইভাবে আই টু ক্লিয়ার করে ড্র করতে পারি दैट এটা হয়তো একটা ইন্টারভাল এখানে আমরা এই যে x এর ভ্যালু গুলো এখানে থাকছে सपोज দিস ইজ দা ভ্যালু স্মল a দিস ইজ দা ভ্যালু দিস ইজ দা ভ্যালু স্মল b দিস ইজ দা ইন্টারভাল স্মল a এন্ড b এবং এখান থেকে আমরা x এর ভ্যালু গুলো পাচ্ছি এবার fx কোথায় থাকতে পারে f of x তার পজিশন এখানে হতে পারে অথবা এখানে হতে পারে তাহলে আমরা যেটা অ্যাজুম করেছিলাম দ্যাট এফ এক্স এর ভ্যালুটা স্মল এম থেকে ক্যাপিটাল এম এর মাঝখানে কোনো একটা গ্যাপ তৈরি হচ্ছে সেই গ্যাপটা এখানে তাহলে তৈরি হতে পারে না তাহলে আমরা এখানে কনক্লুশন ড্র করতে পারি স্মল এম থেকে ক্যাপিটাল এম পর্যন্ত একটা কন্টিনিউয়াস এখানে নিউ এরকম কোনোভাবে থাকবে না সো একটা কন্টিনিউয়াস লাইন পাওয়া যাবে দ্যাট মিন্স আলটিমেটলি স্মল এম থেকে ক্যাপিটাল এম এই যে আমাদের যে ইন্টারভালটা তৈরি হচ্ছে a small m comma capital m this interval this is a this is a continuous interval a continuous set hmm continuous set bolte bhulle ba eta continuous interval ba closed interval bole dite pare so amra bolte pari that this f of i this f of i is an interval তাহলে আমরা কি দেখতে পাচ্ছি দ্যাট কন্টিনিউয়াস রিয়েল ইমেজ অফ এন ইন্টারভাল ইজ অ্যানাদার ইন্টারভাল অর আ সিঙ্গল পাথ সেট তো আমাদের আজকে লেকচারটা এখানেই শেষ করছি এখানে যদি কোনো কোশ্চেন থাকে তাহলে প্লিজ নিচে কমেন্ট বক্সে জানাও এবং যদি ভিডিওটা পছন্দ হয়ে থাকে তাহলে ভিডিওটাকে প্লিজ লাইক করো এবং মন যদি মনে হয় যে না এটা বন্ধুদের উপকারই হয়ে উঠতে পারে তাহলে ভিডিওটাকে প্লিজ বন্ধুদের সাথে শেয়ার করো এবং আমার এই চ্যানেলটাকে সাবস্ক্রাইব করো তাহলে আজকে এইটুকুই শেষ করছি সবাই ভালো থেকো সুস্থ থেকো গুড নাইট থ্যাংক ইউ